I have now set up my first frame. I've arranged all my little props and elements where I want them. I have them as separate layers that can be animated later. I've decided I don't want to use the lollipop, but I won't delete it just in case, right? And so this looks exactly how I want my first frame. I have it set at eight by eight inches by 150 pixels per inch. That's correct. So now what I'm going to do is create a new file. You only have to do this once, but this is going to be my stage file. So I do the same name as my assets file. So FA24-1 Carl. I always want you to put your name in your in your file names. Assignment number three. But this is not assets, this is all caps stage. And I'm going to say create, but I want to create it at 8 by 8 inches. This is a nice check that you're working in the right resolution by 150 pixels per inch with all the defaults. So now this is my stage file. Notice they are right next to each other. Assets, stage. Now how do I get my frame onto my film strip? The stage is your film strip. It's like taking a, a photo of your stop action set, right? What I do is I go to the top most visible layer, which is right here. I hold down option and I say layer merge visible. What that does is it makes a new combined layer at the top of all my component layers. We've done this before. But this time, I'm going to take that layer, hit Command-A to select it all. You could also find that under Select All. Then, Edit Copy, which is Command-C. Now I go to my Stage file, and I hit Edit Paste, Command-V. So I am literally taking a shot of my frame by combining all of it, but not flattening it, right? Combining it onto a new layer copying it and moving it over to my, my stage. And then I'm going to save my stage, Command S. So what is the difference between these two files? This one has lots and lots of layers. Then I deselect and I delete that merged layer. This has lots and lots of layers so I can move things and adjust things. The stage just has the, the one film still. So if I'm going to animate something really simple, like these clouds, in my next frame, I'm just going to move the clouds that much. And now I'm going to do the same thing. Top most visible layer, hold down option, layer, merge visible. Command A to select it all, Command C to copy it all. Go to my stage, Command V to paste it in. And now I have two frames of animation. Now if I move that cloud a little bit more, first I Command D, deselect, delete that, move my cloud a little bit. This is where you always set up your assets for the shot you want. You have layers turned off, on, different opacities, moved around, but this is always all of your toys set up so that you can adjust them at any time. Once you're happy with that shot, then you merge them all into a new layer by holding down option, saying Merge Visible, Command A, Command C, Paste, click here, Command V. And now I have three frames of animation. And the only thing I'm changing is that cloud moving. But then I might decide, oh, you know what? It would be cool, this is why we do it this way, if this tower was behind those clouds. There we go. And I'm 
confusing myself a little bit. Okay, so now I have some finished frames of animation, right? We're just showing the clouds kind of going by. But what if I want this tower to be affected by those clouds? Well, then I say, well, this frame was no good. And I delete that from my stage and I reset it up. So this time I'm going to set it up so that my tower and my, basically, I'm just going to move these clouds up for this next layer, up above it. So it looked like this before, and now it looks like this. So this is what's called onion skinning in animation. When they would use tracing paper to see the frame before, before they animate the next frame. Instead of doing that within the, the same Photoshop file with different layers, we do it by switching from the stage. That was what came before. This is what came after. And I like to do Command-0 so that they're both framed the same way. So as long as you know which one's the stage and which one isn't. So now as the clouds are going to come in, they're going to start to impact the lighting on the rest of the scene. Okay, so now what do I do? I hold down Option. I say layer, merge visible. I command A to select it all, command C to copy it all, move to my stage, command V to paste it all in. So you see how that those clouds are moving in. And then command D to deselect, delete that layer. And now I'm going to move those clouds a little bit more. Now what if my clouds did more than move? What if these clouds also change shape? Well, if you're doing anything more than just moving an asset, then you want to create a duplicate layer, and then you could transform it. So maybe at this point, well, I'll do this last one. So option, layer, merge visible, command A, select it all, command C, copy it all, command V, paste it in, right? So now it's pretty clear that those clouds are moving across. I can get rid of this background blank layer. I have four frames. Now this time, Command-D, deselect, delete it. I'm going to duplicate those clouds, which will make it even heavier, and then move that over here. And I can see if that looks good, right? And now on this duplicate, I'm also going to warp it, change the shape a little bit. So it looks a little wispier, like that. And maybe take the opacity down. So now I'm adding different layers. So I'm going to take the first one and take it down and then add this one. And so this is a subtler shift from this to this. You can always hit Command-0 to frame it exactly the same. So we're making it a little bit brighter, kind of setting the stage. So how do I make that into a frame? Hold down Option, Layer, Merge Visible. Command A to copy it, or select it all. Command C to copy it all. Command V on your stage to paste it in. And now I'm just going to move these clouds on off. So last one, option, layer, merge visible. Command A, select it all. Command C, copy it all. Go to my stage. Command V, paste it in. And now that should be a pretty good cycle. All right, so let me show you how that would look. I'm going to save, save my stage. I'm going to go back to my assets, deselect Command D, because if you don't deselect, it will just empty out that layer instead of deleting that layer. Then I delete that merged layer, right? Save my assets. Now, on the stage file, I can use the animation tool in Photoshop, which is Window Timeline. You only do this to test your animations. That's for a variety of reasons. So I'm just going to show you how to run a quick animation test. There is no transformation yet. I just added some clouds, right? So what do I do? I got to show you where it says Create Frame Animation. So once your timeline is showing, you want to click on Create Frame Animation. We're doing that instead of the Video Timeline Editor. 
And then what we're going to do is click on the timeline window options, which is in the upper right hand corner. And we're going to say make frames from layers. This only you only do this on the stage. When I make the frames from layers, it sets each layer into its own film frame. Then I get to set the timing for them. I hold down shift, select them all and set the timing. My default testing timing is basically three frames a second. So 0.3 seconds, 300 milliseconds. And then I let it play forever. And I can see how those clouds are moving across the scene. Does that make sense? So that animation is time-based media for these six layers. And each layer is playing for a third of a second. And basically all I've done is create establish my setting with that little movement of the clouds. So it took me six frames before I'm even going to introduce my character. So those are called in-betweens. Is the clouds moving? Is that essential to my story? No, but it helps, helps everything. And I, I did put it thinking that this would be nice. Now, what's cool about this is this is what's called a, a motion cycle. So anytime I want those clouds to be moving through, I already know how to do it because I have it built into my assets. So I'm going to mark these clouds blue because the only thing that is now tough is every other frame I do, I'm going to need to have the clouds moving a little bit because it'd be really weird if they move at the beginning in this kind of believable way and then all of a sudden they stop, right? And other stuff happens. So I'm just showing you kind of how you build layers of complexity into animation. You have to think about all the components of your puppet show. And so I have these clouds, and now those clouds are always going to be moving. Now, here's the, the really important thing. I've run my animation test. I've played it through. Now I need to select all of them just in the frames. These are different than your layers. And you do not hit delete. If you hit delete, it will delete your layers. Instead, you drag the frames down to the trash. If you don't do that, if you keep active frames on your timeline while you add new layers, new frames, it will mess up everything. Just like you can't add film to a film reel while the film is playing. Right? You have to make sure it's all taped together and in sequence before you play it. So why would I want to test it? Well, I could see how the clouds move, decide if I need to add more steps in between, or if I didn't need as many. So that's called an animation test. And for a GIF animation, it's not about making it match reality. So it's really just if you like it or not. If you want it to go faster, slower, doesn't matter. But that's how we can test it. So anytime you want to see how it's working, we use that timeline tool. When we're not using it, we move all the frames and put them in the trash in the timeline. And then we close the timeline tool through the window. Right? So have it closed when you're not using it. Because, because of some helpful features in terms of shape tweens and motion tweens that it will automatically do, we don't want to have it open because it won't make any sense. All right. So now... I'm going to start setting up my second frame. And for that, I need a new asset. And that asset is going to go behind my clouds. So I'm actually going to move my clouds into their own folder. I'm going to mark that folder blue and label it because animation really re requires <laughs> organization. So these are the moving clouds. I'm going to have to do that every, every time I do a new frame. So that stays on the top. Now I'm going to move this new asset on top of everything else. And for that, I go to my assets file, which is in there. And I need to bring it into my assets folder because this is a new thing I'm creating that wasn't already in the, in the file. But for me, I'm using my character from assignment two. So what asset should I use? 
I'm going to use my resubmission PNG, right? And I'm going to hold down option, 